Hello, wrestling fans, and welcome back to 10 Count. I'm Seafall, but I am celebrating Impact Wrestling. No surrender. It's coming up, and I got Jay by Dell with me. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. I can't complain. We are going to Sin City this weekend. Life is good. Man, uh, can I also get involved with this? Can I do a little bit of this? Well, of course, my my luck. A little, a little turn, a little slight, slight neck turn, slight uh, neck turn, slight neck turn. We go. Turn. I like it. Turn. It'll rest my beard on it. My head's heavy right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, is it? Maybe a big brain. Either way, yeah, no surrender is coming up. And this is not just a special live event. This is an all weekend event because no surrender airing Friday, February 24th. But then also you have the fallout of this event on the 25th and 26th. What can fans expect when they attend this, not just one event, but a three day extravaganza? They can expect action on top of action on top of action. Like it is a stacked three days of impact wrestling coming to Las Vegas, coming to Sam sound Friday, you got no surrender. And then Saturday and Sunday, you got no surrender fallout. Like it's just, honestly, it's, it's a dream weekend. If you ask me, I love me some wrestling. So no matter what, how many days, it doesn't matter if it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and just adding to Tuesday, a new brand new day for wrestling, because there seems to be wrestling on every day of every channel. But now how did you get involved in impact wrestling? I know you've done so many other interviews before, but you know, it's me and you now here talking. So how did this deal come to be? Because I know you were trained by a vampire gangrel. So how does impact wrestling reach out to you? So, Initially, what happened was I ended up doing a match with Eric Young in 2021. Yes. And that went amazing. I took a pretty awesome pile driver, went a little bit viral for it. Um, but uh, so I ended up having good connections after that. You skip forward about a year later, Impact comes back to Las Vegas. And this is October of 2022 now. So I contact Impact and I say, hey, I'm going to be in town. Um, please let me know if you got anything available. And they contacted me back and said, we got something, you know, come to the show, this, this and that. No, no real details. So I get there. I honestly just think I might be doing, you know, just some extra work or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, maybe I'm an extra body lying around in case they need it. And once I get to the back, uh, they come to me and they tell me the idea, which is going to be putting Giselle Shaw and I together. And we do a couple of um, backstage segments and promos and it just went amazing. And you skip forward a couple days later and I just get that call uh, from Tommy Dreamer actually offering me the contract. And yeah, man, I've been on cloud nine since. Outstanding, because obviously when anyone gets involved with professional wrestling, your dream is always to be, you know, doing this for a living, you know? It's not just, oh, I want to do it on Saturdays, and that's great. But the fact that you're obviously a professional and you are now getting professionally paid, obviously you're, you know, on the independence now, but Impact Wrestling, big time, baby. With Shaw, though, this combination on TV, it just, like, oozes. Like, it just feels so good. It, how is this fit? How does this work out? Because it seems like it's magic how well you guys work together. Yes, I honestly think it's like peanut butter and jelly, right? Like until you put it together, you don't know how good it's going to taste. And that's just all Sean and I. I just think that we bounce so well naturally off of each other. If you see those um, promos and segments, they're usually like one take and that's it because we're just so naturally boom, boom off of each other. It's yes. pretty awesome. Yeah, it's, it's it's incredible to see because, you know, look at wrestling's history. As long as you go back in time, there are combos that look like they're forced together. This one feels like it was an, it's a natural fit. Everything matches up together. You're a pair. And I think that's what makes it even better. It's not just, oh, you're the lackey. No, no, no. Like, this is a beautiful pair, and I love it so much. But though it, no surrender. Uh, we got Diana Perezzo, one of the, the marquee knockouts in Impact Wrestling, taking on. You know, you and your your teammate here, Sean, she has to defend her honor. But why is this on the pre-show? I'm very shocked because this is a match of the night candidate. I agree. Well, you know what? Pre-show or not, I still think that the match is going to deliver. Of course. It's the countdown to no surrender. And I honestly think that Deanna Perrazzo should be putting down her countdown clock for her outfit that she's wearing. Because if she thinks that we forgot about the <laughs> little chilly incident that happened... <laughs> Not once, but twice, she is really mistaken. You know, when when one thing happens, it's an accident. When it happens twice, it seems on purpose. 
Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, we had to get different outfits. The outfits that we got for this weekend are going to be amazing. As always, we always show out. So I just hope that she's wearing something really cheap and easy to replace. <laughs> but it does feel like a match of the night candidate. I, as you mentioned, it doesn't matter where it is, front, back, middle. It feels like this could be a match of the night candidate. Do you agree? A thousand percent. Yeah. I mean, it's like going to a restaurant, right? And they give you a really, really, really good like appetizer right there, right away. That's what Impact is doing, giving people Giselle Shaw and Deanna Perrazzo for the countdown No Surrender. It's amazing. I'm super excited for it. Oh, me too. I, again, this is an event. Uh, I'm looking forward to it because I, I think Impact out of anybody is the most consistent when it comes to their monthly events, pay-per-views, special attractions, it feels like every time they level up, it's never just, oh, we're going to put on a show. We're going to put on a show. Like, no, hey. no, 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 because it's going to be outstanding. But I want to go back for a second because you we mentioned for a brief moment, you were trained by Gangrel? Yes. Uh, what's yeah. it like being trained by a vampire? Can you only train at night? Like, what's the situation? It's definitely at night, but um, it is that old school training and I wouldn't have it any other way. It's not like, oh, it's okay that you did. It's like, no, get your, you know, butt up and hit those ropes right. But honestly, it only made me better. I credit him so much for where I am and how far I've come in this business. Like he's always a phone call away. He and I talk on the phone at least once or twice a month like he's still very much involved in my you know my life and my wrestling career it's amazing outstanding because you usually vampires try to eat you you know it, but this one is being very nice to you giving you phone calls and not asking you what the room temperature of, of your blood is that's nice of him that's exactly nice. exactly <laughs> we don't want him to kill you unless you know it happens and we'll know who did it first but i, I live in boston and i interviewed gail kim about a month ago about a situation that I'm very upset about. Impact Wrestling. I need a live event, pay-per-view quality in Boston. Now, Gail Kim said you talked to, you know, Santino or Scott Demore. I have you here too. Can you help me? Can you make this happen? I can. You know what? I'll talk to Scott and I'll talk to Santino. I don't know if I can reach Scott, but I will definitely talk to Santino, you know, and I will see what we could get going for Boston because I would love to go to Boston. So I am all for it. You know, yeah. I, I just know I will be Jay Vidal will be pushing hard. I'll even offer my executive stylist services over to the higher ups for, you know, a weekend or something, a little 50 percent off card to see what we can do to get Boston going. 50 percent card off. Wow, that's a, that's actually a really good deal. That's like a Valentine's Day present when you give you know, free hugs. I'm like, oh, my wife, just give me a hug. It's it's free all the time. <laughs> But eh, a present's a present, right? It doesn't matter the size. <laughs> exactly. The... They, they need to be happy that they got one. That's true. You know, Christmas time. Where are my, where are my 18 presents? Hey, you should be happy with the things you have. What's exactly. Fun? Be grateful for what you got. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Boston, like the last time I remember, I think the, the impact came here was like Bully Ray versus Sting might have been the main event for one of their uh, big pay-per-views. So I'm waiting. Fingers crossed, legs crossed, toes crossed, everything's crossed. I crossed my eyes. Let me see if I can do it. No, it's not happening. But I want it. I want it. I need it. I think I think that with how Impact is doing right now and traveling, yeah. I think it's only a matter of time. I don't think it's a matter of if it's just a matter of when because, you know, you look at everything that Impact is doing right now, which is amazing. We're going to be uh, in Windsor, Ontario, Canada next month, for example. Sure. And then after that, it's going to be uh, Toronto and then Chicago. So I think it's just a matter of time before we make our way over to Boston. So just stay tuned. It's going to happen. Okay. It's a matter of what, not a matter of if. Because I remember last year, the rumor online for Bound for Glory was like, they were like, oh, Chicago, Boston, New York. I'm like, I saw Boston in those rumors. Like, <laughs> Make it happen, but we'll we'll see. I, you know what? I don't want to sit here all day and talk about it. I only have this much amount of time with you, so let's move on. Let's move on. Now, Mickey James is also defending her knockouts championship against Masha, and this is a huge match because if you go back to Hard to Kill, when Mickey James's career was on the line against Jordan Grace, and I think one of the greatest matches in the knockouts division of all time, who's going to win this one? Because Mickey James had a career on the line, extra levels of i have to win this now she has the championship we've reached a new level of i have to win this because she's already proved herself this one this is gonna be hard yeah i mean me personally my personal i am a huge mickey james fan you know i grew up watching mickey james however 
Masha is dominant. She is a badass in every sense of the word. I, I'm pushing. I, I, I want Mickey to win. I want Mickey to win. But, you know, I think I think Masha might have this one. Those are fighting words from somebody. <laughs> I know. I'm going to have to evade. Every time I see Mickey backstage, I have to be like, hello. And then just walk by. You, you give her that 50% off the fashion advice card. Every exactly. time. Just carry them around. Just every exactly. time you make someone angry. Just <laughs> hand them out. That's what you got to do. Uh, or Mickey James will just take you out. But we'll, we'll you know, we'll see. <laughs> God. Who knew this would be so much fun? Though, um, you are the first openly gay man to sign with Impact Wrestling. And how does that feel? Because obviously this is inspiring to so many people around the world because representation is a, is one of the biggest things in any business, not just wrestling, uh, sports, business, anything. How does it feel to at least be the first, but now to kind of be the, the beginning of an inspiring story for so many other people who want to open up and join professional wrestling? Well, it's funny that you say that. I didn't really know when I signed the contract, when I put pen to paper, that I was the first openly gay male wrestler signed with Impact. It wasn't until maybe a couple days later when uh, Impact called me about doing the press release for it. And they're like, yeah, I think you're actually the first uh, openly gay mm -hmm. male wrestler signed with Impact. I was like, oh, that's cool. Hung up. I go about my day for a couple of minutes. I'm like, whoa, that's not just cool. It's it's groundbreaking, right? right? It's it's like we're opening up these doors that were once closed. We're knocking down these barriers. And it's all I've ever really wanted to do when I came out in professional wrestling. Because my first two years in the business, I was actually in the closet. Mm. Um, my family knew I was gay. My friends knew I was gay. But anybody in professional wrestling, I would keep them you know, outside of my personal life. Yeah. So they didn't, they wouldn't know it, it, to a point like where I even had a boyfriend and I would, uh, I would tell people that I would train with, yeah, I'm going to go see my girlfriend right now. Wow. <laughs> and so, but you know, you skip forward to now where two years in the business, I really wanted to come out. And then now seven years in the business and I'm signed to impact and I'm doing something that matters for the LGBTQ plus community and professional wrestling. It's yeah. honestly, it it feels really good. But with that being said, I know that, you know, there's that, I don't want to say pressure. It's like welcome pressure to do mm. good now, whether it be in the business or outside of the business. And I, I love it. I, I'm here for it. That's awesome to hear because, uh, for years, you know, there have been stories like everyone knew Pat Patterson, you know, everyone. But but it wasn't like this, uh, this out in the open type of deal. Like if you were in the wrestling world and you knew enough, you knew that uh, Chris Canyon. I know he had a lot of pressure and um, suffering throughout time in his career. Um, and then you had uh, Fred Roster, you know, a.k.a. Darren Young in WWE. So like there's been many, and, you know, obviously women, too, like Sonya Deville. But there has been so many people throughout time that weren't. You just said like your first two years, you're saying, I'm going to go see my, you know, I'm going to go see my girlfriend. Like that must have been a, a level of pressure on you to not in your brain slip up and say, oh, I'm about to go see my boyfriend. And and I think being, you know, openly gay and, and all this, I think that to me right there is the beginning of people being like, OK, it, if I want to be a professional wrestler, I don't have to like hide my who I really am. Because if you hide who you really are, you're not really being who you are. And plus, you're putting so much more pressure on yourself than just being a good performer. You're putting your pressure on yourself of being like living in a, a lie and a secret. So obviously, what was that situation like trying to keep up this this rouge? Um, it was definitely tough. Uh, and fun fact, going back to going back to Gangrel, he was actually the one who inspired me to come out. He's what? Cause I confided in one of the, um, one of my, uh, classmates during training that I was gay and they ended up telling gang girl. And at first I was upset about it, but then I was so happy because he pulled me to the side and he's like, are you gay? And I'm no, 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 I'm not gay. He's like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, no, no, I'm not gay. And he's like, you know, I, I, I take time to help you. The least you can do is tell me. And I was like, oh, I was like, yeah, I am. And he's like, why don't you tell people? And I told him, I'm like, I'm just nervous that I'm not going to get a job, that I'm never going to get hired by a company. And he's like, forget that. If a promoter doesn't hire you because you're gay, then he's a terrible promoter anyways. You better be yourself. And 
honestly, that was the best advice I was ever given. You know, I don't have to hide who I am. I get to paint my nails and, you know, wear the clothes that I feel comfortable wearing and just be myself. Like what you see on TV is Jay Vidal, the same Jay Vidal that you see outside of TV, that you see at the club, that you see, you know, at the bar, that you see just walking down the street. It's, it's, that's me. And I'm grateful for that. Outstanding. I'm so glad that Gangrel didn't try to eat you and he gave you good advice. Exactly. Yeah. You know, the sun started coming up, so he had to leave. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, tell me now because I will I will melt. I, I will melt in front of you. You don't tell me right now what's going on. The only truth. I'm okay with it. Just please. I'm going to melt. <laughs> Jeez. But uh, heavy from happy, heavy to happy. But uh, I just want to say uh, thank you so much for being here on 10 Count and sharing your thoughts and your feelings and your inspiring story. And plus, again, no surrender. February 24th. I'm pumped. You're pumped. We are all pumped. It doesn't matter where you are on the show because you're part of the main event in my eyes. So exactly. eat, eat exactly. it. Eat exactly. it, Josh Alexander and Rich Swan. No, that'll be a good match, too. <laughs> 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 I'm re- no, I'm really looking forward to their match. But yes, as you said, if Giselle Shaw is anywhere, J. Vidal's right next to her. That's the main event in any card, any place, any time. Boom. J. Vidal, thank you so much for being here on 10 Count. I've been Seafall. He's been J. Vidal. He was not eaten by Gangrel. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.